Hey everyone, people have been asking about the LM2 computer kit that I've bolted on to this 1100 and some old YouTube videos. Been getting a lot of requests, so today I'm going to bolt that kit onto this and we're going to go through an entire session with the computer and analyze all the exhaust gases coming out of these pipes for carburetor adjustment, needle adjustment, jet adjustment, what have you. So let's get started. And we can see my bike is modified for this test set right by the factory exhaust gas analyzer screws. We have O2 bungs welded in for wideband oxygen sensors. The test set now comes in a nice plastic case. Way back when, mine only came in a cardboard box. And here's the main unit. Regrettably, mine is a single sensor unit, not a dual. So I actually have to do this test twice on the V-Star. It includes a removable SD card for the data logging. Power is connected via a cigarette lighter style 12 volt adapter. I made a further adapter for other motorcycles that connects that adapter directly to the battery. Here's a cable that they supplied that I modified for my motorcycle needs that connects to a single ignition pulse that's used to know how fast the engine is spinning during the test. This cable could be further modified to support throttle position sensor, but I don't support that on either of my bikes. And finally, we have the harness for the oxygen sensor, as well as the oxygen sensor itself. This includes the necessary power required for the heater of the oxygen sensor. I'll kick things off by mounting the main unit into my telephone holder. It only grips the top portion, so I'm going to secure it and then use Velcro to secure the bottom portion so it doesn't fall off the bike. I'm going to cinch that nice and tight. Plug in my power connection first, and then into the cigarette lighter adapter. Then I'm going to tie up all the slack with Velcro. I don't want any loose cables hanging off this bike. I have a sealed connector up front that I've opened that hangs off the tachometer that I use from that signal to get the engine speed. I plug my cable from the multi-purpose harness into that now. Wrapping that wire around the bars just one time, I then plug it into the bottom of the unit. The slack from that cable is then tied up onto the handlebars. Now we have the harness for the O2 sensor. I plug that harness in first into our computer. I left the other end sitting on the seat. I won't be dressing it in just yet. First, I'll be plugging the wideband O2 sensor into the connector. And I'll be leaving this out for now because there's a calibration process for the O2 sensor in the computer. And this is what we're looking at for a setup. It's not pretty, but it is safe and it is effective. Again, this is not designed as a permanent fixture or daily driving. It's designed for testing in mind. I can't forget to remove the plastic cap off of the O2 sensor for the next step. And for this, I'm just going to hang the sensor freely over the rear view mirror so it doesn't come into contact with anything. Turning on the ignition provides power to my 12 volt power and we see that the unit turns on. But I am seeing an E9 and that tells me I'm getting less than 12 volts at the lighter adapter over there. Think of the battery's low, I run the bike and try it, but the E9 persists. The test shows I got a bad connection somewhere causing about a 2 volt voltage drop at that adapter, so I'm gonna have to find another way. I end up running directly off the battery with another cable, now we're getting a warming up code, so this is good. And now we're seeing 20.9 in free air, which is good. But I decide just to demonstrate the calibration of the sensor while it's out. So I go down to calibrate, start sensor calibration, and it completes. It's supposed to be 20.9 plus minus 0.4. So this is good. Using my one inch open end, I'll be removing the bung cap from the front cylinder. Pretty easy with a wrench this big. And it's still a little warm, so I gotta be careful when I take this thing out so I don't burn myself. I could've waited. The O2 sensor goes right in, nothing on the threads around the O2 sensor. A 7 8 will be used to snug down the sensor. Not too tight. And now the sensor can be connected to the harness. This is gonna have to be held up somehow so the slack doesn't hang down. I've taped everything onto the floorboard to secure it. All the slack is taped and held in the saddlebag. None of the wiring is loose or could get caught into anything. All the video will be done off my helmet-mounted GoPro. 
and because I have no throttle position sensor, I use these marks every 25% to indicate my position. So let's do the first run. I always start the GoPro first and capture me hitting the record button on the LM2. This is followed by five quick bursts of throttle, and this is used to sync up the initial videos together during the editing process in Final Cut Pro. And this is me just leaving the neighborhood. You can see the videos are perfectly synced up. Without the video of the motorcycle itself, you lose a lot of context in these videos, even with the RPM and the O2 sensor. So I'm gonna make a left-hand turn coming onto an intersection where there's nobody in front of me. And we're gonna evaluate a couple of things here, and we're gonna see some common themes. And first off, we're gonna notice that as I lay onto it, it gets rich. It drops from about 14 and a half down to the high 12s. The other thing you'll notice is that when I lay off the throttle or shift between gears, it gets very lean, which is normal, that's just fine. But you can see as the RPMs ramp up and I lay on it, it gets rich, and as I let go of the throttle right there, I dump it, very lean. And that's why you get that popping in the exhaust. Here's a great example of just a slow deceleration and the fuel air mixture is off the charts. The bike is in gear and it's just slowly ramping down and you can see it's like 20 something to one. Now watch here, I'm very slowly accelerating and we could see that the fuel air mixture is stabilizing at about 14 and change. And it looks really good and then I'm shifting gears, it bounces, and it comes right back to where it is, 14 and change. And it's not till I start to lay on it, right before I have to slow down because of traffic, but we'll see it's still good. And just as I start really laying into the throttle, it just drops down to 12. And then at this point, I gotta let go of it. It's in the 11s right there. Look at that. Then I gotta let go of it already and decelerate. One more really good example of this, going easy on it, and then I start to lay on it, and we can watch the mixture richen up until such a time as I let go of it. Better to be a little bit richer than too lean on full power production, but I believe these Max Air kits are designed to run around 12 and a half or high 12s when you produce some power. Moving ahead to another take, I just wanted to provide for regular driving, not any crazy uh, acceleration or deceleration. We see that the mixture is somewhat stable if I'm not trying to open it up. So that's pretty good, but we can see that it's definitely not highway speed. If I were doing highway speed, it would richen up, so that would be problematic. And here we see low speed acceleration through the gears into a neighborhood. So we're looking at about 25 to 30 miles an hour, and everything at this speed looks just fine. Based on these findings, maybe a shim removal on the needle on the top end and reevaluate, but it seems to be working just fine. Move over to the next car. While editing, the bike cooled down, and now I'm going to remove the O2 sensor from the first pipe. Putting the bung cap back on with anti seize, I screw it in, but then in and out a couple of times to distribute it, just like that. And then finally, all the way in, snugging it down with the box end of the one inch wrench. Now I'll open up the cap for the rear cylinder. It's a little less clearance than the front one, but doesn't present any issue. Though I did find I'm gonna need two hands to turn in this oxygen sensor and I can't hold the camera at the same time. Snug it down, plug it in, and strap it down. We're ready for the next run. Starting the recording, syncing everything up, and I got an immediate observation, and that is that the mixture is a lot richer on this one. It's between high 12, low 13, just sitting idle. But as I just come off the throttle, it's leaner than the other one. And that is to say that if I go back and lean this out, which I will in the next run, I know that the PMS screw is going to have an influence on that and make this off idle even leaner than it is now. So right now it's at like 14.8, 14.9, I see 15 up there. That's going to definitely get higher on the next run. But I'm going to roll with this and see what we get because I know that that is not really going to influence uh, the wide open throttle to any measurable extent. Also notice that the RPMs are sitting around 840, 850 at that mixture. Now once I start coming out of this intersection, just as I did before, we're going to accelerate. And we're going to see that the characteristics are exactly the same as the other carburetor. 
it's going rich. When I lay on it, all the way down to 10, we can see 10 and 11, 12. And this is good. That means this could probably also benefit from a shim removal and nothing more. 11. And now I let go of it. Don't see it obviously uh, leaning out, which is fine. But same exact characteristic, same issues we saw on the last car. The idle mixture screw has now been adjusted to raise it up to match that of the other cylinder. Notice the RPMs is also sitting around 980 now. And so I sync up the camera for the next run. And as predicted, the off idle ratio is sitting up there, high 14s, low 15s, definitely too lean. So this is something that's gonna require a closer investigation, probably the swap out of a jet or accommodation of jet and the PMS screw to find out what we need. This intersection has a very long light, but gives me time to look at my idle mixture. Again, we seem to start off just fine on the launch, though I'm slowly taking off on a turn on an intersection so we start giving it gas, coming off the mid-range, we start to richen up again. And at some point, we get really rich and stay there. Yeah, if I'm seeing the 11s, it's too rich. And right here, you can see we're just sitting consistently in the low 12s, 12 and a half. All day long as we're accelerating until we let go. Again, it's good that it matches the other cob consistently, and it's probably set up that way from Max Air. But we're going to make just a slight adjustment, and I think that'll be fine. Now a more non-aggressive acceleration from a U-turn. And once I load it up on the next gear, you can see it dropping into the mid-12s again. And I'll stress, I'm not laying on it wide open throttle to get this in the 12s. I'm just loading it up a little. Here we can see the mixture gets richer, and it's linear to the acceleration right now of the engine. As the RPMs go up, the mixture's going down almost perfectly, you see that? See it start to taper off because it becomes downhill and there's less load on the engine. I really like to hook up the throttle position up to this unit and release another video. But I believe I've collected all the data I've needed for these two runs. I'm not doing all the jetting and tuning in this video, it would take too long, but there's a site up here I'll provide a link below that talks all about the jetting and tuning and theory and the pod kits for this specific motorcycle and the influence of the jets and the needles and what they have on the fuel mixture. It's a great site, so check it out. When I do get into the carbs and make the changes and hopefully hook up the throttle position sensor, I hope to post another video that's a follow-up to this. Until then, I hope you found this video enjoyable, entertaining, and informative. Do me a favor, hit that like button down below, helps me out a lot when you do, and hit that subscribe button for more videos like this when they come out. When the next video in this series comes out, a link will be posted in the top right corner. Again, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. Would you like to reply? <laughs>